In this video, we are going to learn how to assign external cost codes in our ICD-10 CM code manual. So what exactly are external cost codes? These are a supplementary classification. The external cost codes are used to describe any kind of event that happened that caused an injury, an illness, a poisoning, or a late effect, whether it was environmental, whether it was a, an animal, or some kind of specific accident, our external cause codes help us tell that story of how that injury happened or how that complication happened. So just like the neoplasm table or the table of drugs and chemicals, in the very back of your icd 10 cm alphabetical index, the very back pages are the external cause index. So if you guys open up your icd 10 cm code manual, mine is starts on page 3. 98, again, every page might be different depending on what version you have, but you should find the external causes index, again, in the very back of your alphabetical index, the very back pages, and they go from the end of your alphabetical index, actually behind the table of drug and chemicals, all the way to the beginning of where the tabular list of diseases starts with category A00. So my pages go to page 432. So page 398 to page 492 or 432. So you'll see that there's a separate alphabetical index like I just showed you for external causes and there's also a separate tabular. So mine is again on page 1213 your pages might differ a few and then it's behind all the rest of the tabular pages so page 1213 is the factors that influence health so those are the z codes and that's where mine ends and mine starts on page 1151 chapter 20 the external causes of morbidity so the external causes are you can see almost at the very end our z codes that we learned about earlier are right be or right behind the external causes index in the tabular list so behind the complications of care that we just learned about that tabular is where chapter 20 the external causes tabular starts so page 1151 to page 1212 is where mine is in my book so i just wanted to point this out so just keep that in the back of your mind as we're going through this lecture today that there's a separate alphabetical index for external causes and a separate tabular. The other thing I want you to keep in mind is that these are additional codes only. You can never have an external cause code as your principal diagnosis or first listed diagnosis, never. There is never a time that is your first code, ever, never allowed. So why do we have these external cause codes? These are actually optional codes most of these are optional codes, but I, I encourage you guys to code them as much as, as they're applicable to the scenarios you're coding. Why, why are these important to code? These really help capture our story, right? Remember in coding, we are like the medical investigator, if you will, right? We read through the documentation and determine the who, what, when, where, why, and how and assign those diagnosis and procedure codes to tell that story. Well, these external cause codes really tell a big part of that story 
If we're coding a scenario where our patient was in an accident or had some kind of injury or reaction to something, right? If our patient was in a car accident and we just coded the injuries but didn't say how that happened, we're not really telling the whole story. Or if our patient um, was, you know, tr like depressed and maybe attempted suicide, but we didn't say how that suicide attempt was occurring, we're not telling the whole story or even where it might have occurred. So external cause codes really tell how an accident happened, where that accident happened, the status of the patient at the time of the injury, and the activity. So there's really four different elements that we can capture with an external cause code, right? Just saying that somebody was in a car accident, that's still kind of vague. Were they in a car accident in a, in a traffic? Were they the driver? Were they the passenger? Were they at work? Were they doing a military service? Were they like driving on a street, a highway? Were they driving up in the mountains? Were they involved in a wreck with another car? Or did they run into a stationary object, maybe like a tree? Did they run into a lake? All those things tell the story. So those external cause codes really help tell the story and so I encourage you guys to use these, again, as your documentation specifies, find the codes to specify as well. Our external cost codes have seventh character digits, just like we saw in the rest of our injury, poisoning, and complication sections. So our, our seventh characters are, again, the A, the D, and the S. So A is initial, D is subsequent, S is sequela. So the external cause guidelines, our codes will range between V00 to Y99. And an external cause code may be used with any code in the ranges of our regular section. So 001 to V89, that indicates if our patient had an injury, a poisoning, adverse effect, a burn, all those. Now the coding guidelines tell us that we use an external cause code for the initial treatment of an injury, poisoning, or adverse effect, but not subsequent. Again, we can never put an external cause code as the first listed or primary diagnosis. We do want to code as many external cause codes as applicable as, as our documentation has specified. And if the external cause code is not specific, it's not described elsewhere, like if, if we're coding the activity, but it doesn't say what it is. We don't have to code those. Some of our external cause codes are combinations that tell us how and where. Like, for example, if a patient was struck in hockey by a field stick, that's all together that they were struck in a sport and then by what? By a field stick. So if an external cause from chapter 20 it will not be needed, we don't have to assign it, if the intent is included in another chapter. Like if we're coding a poisoning, we don't have to do an external cause code to show it's poisoning when we have a poisoning code from the table of drug and chemicals explaining that that was a poisoning. But if it was a suicide by, or attempted suicide by another method, we would want to pick that up with an external cause code. So the external cause coding guidelines tell us that there's a hierarchy that we follow. So if we have two or more events that cause separate injuries, we want an external cause for each one. So if the patient had two different things that happened to them and caused two separate injuries, we have an external code cause for both. And now if we have multiple external co cause codes, we have a hierarchy we follow. Abuse takes priority over other external codes. Terrorism takes priority over everything except for abuse. Cataclysmic events take priority over everything except for terrorism and abuse. Transportation accidents take priority over other codes, external cause codes, except for cataclysmic, terrorism, and abuse. And then our activity and external cause status codes are assigned following all intent external cause codes. And then our final one is the first listed 
external cause code should be related to the most serious diagnosis. So was it due to like, like say an assault, an accident, self-harm, etc. We would follow the hierarchy listed above, again, if we had more than one injury, but if not, we have the most serious diagnosis, that's what our first listed external cause code is. We have place of occurrence, activity, and status external cause codes. So activity codes come from Y93, and we assign a code from Y93 to describe the activity of the patient at the time of injury. We use this at the initial encounter, and we do not assign Y93.9 unspecified activity if the activity is not stated, like if the patient was doing yoga or sewing when they got hurt. The occurrence, the place of occurrence is where they were at. Were they at a movie house? Were they at their home, in their kitchen? And then the status is if the patient was, a, was at a military event, whether they were non-military, whether they were a student, a volunteer. And again, we do not assign an unspecified for a status. If the status is not stated, we don't code it. So external cause status codes are, we only have four choices. And again, the unspecified, we're not gonna code. So it's not common that we're coding these. Here are some examples of external cause codes. Let's say we have a seven-year-old patient who has a green stick fracture of his left radial shaft after falling off the trampoline he was jumping on in his backyard. So we have our first code, which is for the, the actual injury, right? We can never have the external cause code first. We're coding the injury, which was the fracture. Then we have to say how that fracture happened. It was from a fall. And then our activity, what he was doing to cause the fall, right? He was on the trampoline, so we're gonna code trampolining. And then place of occurrence, where this happened. So I'm gonna give you guys a minute to look these all up, and then we're gonna go over the codes. Now remember, fracture is gonna come from the regular index. Fall, activity, and place of occurrence are all gonna come from our external code index. Okay, so hopefully you guys have your codes. So we should have S52.312A, which is the, the fracture of the shaft of the radius. Then we're gonna code the fall from playground equipment initial encounter, which is W09.8XXA. Then our activity was trampolining, which is Y93.44. And then we're gonna code his, he was at his home, which is his non-institutional residence in the yard. And that's Y92.096. So let's do another practice. So in this scenario, our patient is a 32 year old female seen in the ER with a cut to her right index finger in the kitchen at her apartment with a knife as she was washing the dishes. She has a closed uh, or she has a small simple laceration that was closed or repaired with two stitches. So what codes are we gonna assign? So again, if you wanna pause for a minute, look up the codes. We're gonna go over them to save time in the lecture. I'll give you just a minute. So here are our answers to that case. We have the laceration of the right index finger, S61.210A, the contact with the knife, initial, W26.0XXA, the activity was food preparation or cleanup, Y93.G1. It occurred in the kitchen and in her apartment, which is Y92.030. And then we have to assign our CBT code for repairing that skin laceration. Next, I just wanted to go over external cause codes for late effects. These are called residual effects or late effects or sequela, and these remain after an acute phase of an injury has healed. So when we're coding these, you want to code the late effect or sequela, and you assign the S for the seventh character. A sequela is never to be used with a current injury and use a late effect external cause code for subsequent visits when a late effect of the initial injury is being treated, but do not use a late effect external cause code for a subsequent visit for follow-up care when no late effect has been documented. 
And here's a scenario, and then I'm gonna give you the codes in just a minute. So our codes are L90.5 for scar of skin and T20.26XS for burn of secondary.